Pastor Leonard Osumba here this morning. I welcome each and every one of you to command your morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and His mercies are new to us this day. I want to assure you that God has got good things for you planned in this day. We should arise this day in Jesus' name, go forward in His name, and have positive expectations of the good thing God has, has for us today. I'm going to talk about Jesus, our sufficiency. It's no coincidence that you're watching this program this morning. God, before the foundation of the world, had ordained it and planned it that you'd hear this message today because I believe God has things for you that would empower you to be able to stand on those truths and command your morning today and create the destiny and the future that God has intended always for you to have. I know each one of us has got a desire in heart that desire can come to pass if only we believe and we command it in the name of Jesus. Now Moses met with God one day, turned around, faced Egypt that he had fled away from. I believe the truth that you shall hear in this morning shall empower your life, shall empower you, and you shall turn and face the enemies that you have previously been unable to face. Yes, Moses was able to go to Egypt and free a whole nation, one man with God, turned around from the place that had intimidated him, the place that he had fled around. He turned around and he was able to go back and free a generation that had been locked for over 400 years. This day you are sitting there because God intends you to know that Jesus is your sufficiency in the following messages so that you may be able to turn around and go back and free your family Free, free your generation and free your contemporaries from the bondages that have held them for generations to generations in the name of, in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. I thank God because, because today we've come in Jesus' name to say that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and life is about power. Anything we do is about power. To command your morning, you shall need power. Where do you get power? From the hand of God and from the message of God. There are th two things I want to read and I want to talk about. One is in the book of Genesis. I want to read from the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 8. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 8 is where I'm taking my verse from. The Bible says here, The Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. There are two things I want to talk about in, in empowering you to command your morning. You know that God created from the worlds by the word that he spoke. We are in the image and the likeness of God, and we are going to form our world by our words. Whatever has been lost, whatever has been injured, whatever has been destroyed by the devil, today you are going to realize your new nature in Christ Jesus. You are going to rise up and command a restoration. You are going to recreate a new beginning for yourself. By the words you are going to speak from your mouth. You are going to recreate a future. You are going to recreate a destiny for your home. You are going to change the atmosphere in your home. By the words you speak in Jesus' name. Our words have got power to create. Our words have got power to destroy. But today, I'm going to speak truths that are going to reveal to you the hidden truths in your life that are going to empower you to speak words that are going to recreate a new destiny, a new future for your home, for your children, and for your family in Jesus' name. In the book of Genesis, the Bible says, God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put man whom he had formed. There are two things I want you to see in this verse. Number one, it is God who planted a garden. Number two, it is God who formed man. Let me repeat myself. Number one, God planted a garden and God formed the man. Those two attributes are necessary for authority to be able to stand and command. God must give you a placement and God must form you. I want to first of all to talk about our placement in God. When God created the world, he created Eden. Once he created Eden, 
God positioned and determined everything that was in Eden, was ordered for, was created, not by the wisdom of man, but the wisdom of God. There was a place called Eden that God created that place. And God placed man where he had created. The first thing I want to talk about is divine placement for empowerment. Yes, divine placement for empowerment. God must create for you an estate. The way God created for Adam an estate. The placement of God is empowerment of God. Many of you are praying you want a job. Why? You want divine placement. Hence, you want a job that God will give you. Hence, you are praying. Some of you also, they are praying for marriage because you want divine placement. If God would place you divinely in a marriage, you believe you'll have divine authority and divine power in the marriage. Many of you are, play, are praying for ministries and you want to be in the place where God has ordained for you. You want divine placement. Why? Because divine placement is divine empowerment. We have, got, we have got senators, we have got governors and elective posts in this nation, and many of you are looking for jobs and praying to find placement in com companies. Why? Because you mean a placement by God is an empowerment by God. If God is going to empower you today, God must give you a divine placement. And I pray in Jesus' name, as you go in this day, you may have divine placement of God in Jesus' name. The Bible says that the steps of a good man, in Psalms 20, 37 verse 23, says the steps of a good man are ordered of God. Why is that important? Because when God orders your footsteps, you shall be able to stay and be in a place at the right time and meet the right people. God must order your footsteps to be in the right place. Your placement must be divinely ordered of God today. I pray in Jesus' name, this day, God in his wisdom, God in his mercy may place you, may order your footsteps to be in the right place at the right time for divine empowerment. Because when you are at the place God wants you to be, you are likely to meet the divine assignment God wants you to meet in the name of Jesus Christ. Men are praying and asking God for marriages, placement in marriage. Because you, you, you know when God gives you a, a spouse, God has empowered your life. I pray this day God may answer your plea. God may meet you at the point of your need and place you in your place of divine empowerment. I'm reminded of the place in Genesis 30, 20, 24 where Abraham had prayed that his servant may go and get a, a bride for, for Isaac. And the, and the servant of God prayed, the servant of Abraham, prayed that God in his wisdom may grant him journey mercies, may be with him, and may put him in a divinely placed position that he may be able to prosper in his journey. And indeed, God answered his prayer. He was at a well ordained by God, at a place ordained by God. And when the shepherdess was coming, he was able to meet Rebecca at the place God had ordained for him. Your placement by God is your divine empowerment in Jesus' name. I pray for whatever you shall need today as you call upon God this morning. God may ordain your footsteps today and you may be at the right place at the right time for God to answer you without any delay in Jesus' name. The place of divine placement by God is the place of divine rest. May God in his mercy give you divine placement that may give you divine rest in your life in Jesus' mighty name. I thank God this day because God says in the book of 1 Chronicles 12.32 that the children of Isaac knew the times and the seasons that the times and the seasons, because of that, what happened? They were in dominion over their brethren. The 12 tribes of, of Israel were in subject to the children of Isaac. Why? Because they knew the timing of God. Knowing the timing of God is knowing the placement of God. Because you know what God intends for you to have at the right time. And when you have it, you enter divine rest in Jesus' name. I pray every struggle may cease in your life today. As you learn to know the, the timing of God, may God in his wisdom and his mercy lead you in his timing to give you divine rest and divine su su supply in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank God for his mercy and for his goodness. That's the number one thing I wanted you to know, that divine placement was ordained of God in the Garden of Eden. And that divine placement of God was the divine empowerment of God. 
The second thing that I want to talk about is God saying he placed the man he had formed in the place he had made for the man. Praise Jesus. May God place you in the place he has formed for you so that you may have, move in all sufficiency, that the grace of God may be sufficient for you. When you are in the place where God has ordained for you, God's grace is sufficient for you in Jesus' mighty name. God formed man in his image and in his likeness. God talks, so man has to talk. We speak because, man, because God spoke. We also operate in the likeness of God. God dominates by his word. We must dominate by our word. When David was going to find Goliath, David said, this day the Lord has, will deliver you into my hands. Those are the words that David spoke out. And those words are the words that gave David dominance over Goliath. It's not the stones that David, David threw. It is the words that David spoke that day and said, This day the Lord will grant you, will give you into my hands in Jesus' name. This day I command in Jesus' name. This day God has blessed it and given you into your hands. The day is in your hands in the name of Jesus. Your day is in your hands by the authority in Jesus' name. Whatever you are facing this day, the chance for this day, God in his wisdom and mercy shall give you the wisdom, shall give you the grace to go and dominate this day in Jesus' name. It's by your words that you dominate. We are in the likeness and the image of God. So we must dominate by our words. We create our world by the words we speak. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall be glad and rejoice in it. Nothing shall cause you sorrow. We dominate the day. In Jesus' name. Blessed is he who goes forth in Jesus in the name of the Lord. You are blessed as you go this day. Because you are not going in your power and your wisdom. You are going in the name of Jesus Christ. So you are blessed in Jesus' name. You better believe that for the glory of God. For God has created us in his image and in his likeness. So we dominate in the name of Jesus by the spirit and by the word of God. In Jesus' name. Now, there is something that happened at the Garden of Eden. So here we have got man created, placed divinely by God in the nature of God. Then man was able to exercise and have perfect dominance. Perfect dominance. Yes, I'm, I'm in the place God wants me to be. I'm in the image and the likeness of God. I therefore operate like God. I've got perfect dominance. I pray for anybody who is struggling anywhere that you are. God of a second chance may relocate you today and give you the place that he has intended you to be. That the grace of God upon you may function and you may cease to live by flesh and blood and live under the grace of God, which is where our sufficiency is. Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God. That God in his wisdom may give you the grace and to have the dominion because you are operating in the place where you are in the image of God under the grace of God in Jesus' name. Let me tell you, brethren, the devil knew something. He knew something. He knew the dominance of man over the earth was because he was where God had placed him. Is it any wonder? Many, many men call of God may struggle in the place of their calling because what the devil can do is to make sure that he has misplaced you a little bit. Because when you are misplaced in your calling, then you are struggling in your calling. No wonder God told Abraham, this sacrifice of Isaac can only happen in Mount Moriah. May you find the place of your calling, that you may find the place of your sacrifice, that you may find the place where the divine promises of God upon your life may be released for you and be established. It was when Abraham found Mount Moriah that he could sacrifice at Mount Moriah that the promises of God, that God had promised him, was able to be established upon his life. Any pastor, any man of God struggling out there, I pray by the grace of God that God may relocate you by his mercy. God of a second chance may give you a second chance and relocate you so that you are not in the place where you, are, you ought to what you ought to be doing what you are doing for God under the grace of God and every promise of God upon your life will find fulfillment in Jesus mighty name hallelujah in Jesus name 
every marriage that is struggling because of wrong misplacement, God is a God of a second chance. The Bible says in Christ Jesus, all things will only work together for your good. I pray that that shall be your portion in Jesus' name. Believe the God of a second chance. All things will only work together for your good in the name of Jesus Christ. The devil knew if he can misplace you, he has put you into a place of struggle. But he also knew something. If I can change the nature of man, I can change his output. You can cover, if I can change the nature of man, I have changed the output of man. He knew it was the divine nature of God in man that was making man have the dominance that man had. And he decided to say, I'm going to change this nature. Because if I can change the nature of man, I can change the output of man. And I can change his dominance. So he cheated man, and man fell. And man ate the forbidden fruit. And man's nature began to change and was changed. And for the first time, man hid from God. I want to read a scripture that is very important as I want to delve into this. Genesis 3, verse 8 to 9. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? When the nature of man changed, this is very unfortunate, but listen, it's, gone, it's a very crucial time. When the nature of man changed, for the first time, man hid. Man backed down. Fear befell man. Why did man hid? Because it occurred to him, for the first time, there are things that he realized he would not be able to do. That's why he's hiding. Man backed down. Man was not created by God to back down. Man was created for dominance. He could command. He could say this alone is alone. He could uh, command things. But for the first time, when his nature was corrupted, he backed down because he lost his dominance. For the first time, I cannot become a feature in the language of man. Will I ever get married? Started to creep in man. Will I ever succeed? Doubt, fear crept into man. Man was hiding. Many people are hiding. They are wondering whether they shall succeed. That is hiding. God never created man for failure. To talk failure and to think failure is to talk from the fallen nature. Is to think from the fallen nature. That is hiding. Man stepped away from the place of dominance. And for the first time, there were things that man could not do. He hid from adventure. He hid from his responsibility. Fathers, mothers, children, employees hide from their responsibility. I cannot manage. It's too much for me. That's a language God never intended man to have. When man hid from God and started to speak that language, it was so painful to God. God was so pained because for the first time, his image was confessing to a nature, an output, an outcome God never intended man to have. Man was having an experience that was strange to the divinity in heaven. The throne room of God was taken aback by the confessions and the behaviors of men because man was in perfect dominance, perfect image, perfect output. Now corruption had taken over and man was hiding. I can't manage. I cannot do this. How can I do this? It's impossible for me. It's too difficult for me. Man started to hide. And the corrupt man is still hiding today. He's still hiding today. That's not the nature God intended man to have. No way. So God came down. When man started to speak that, God started to come down. 
and God started to come down and be the sufficiency for man. God came down. Let me read a verse here in the book of Genesis 3, 7. Genesis 3, verse 7. Look at this. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed leaves together and made themselves covering. And they, when they heard the voice, look at verse 27, 321. Genesis 321. It says that also for Adam and, and Eve, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. For the first time, man entered into self-effort that was not divinely ordained of God. They sewed leaves and covered themselves. But hear me, when God came in verse 21 of Genesis chapter 3, the Bible says, God killed and clothed them. God became their sufficiency. Our sufficiency is of God. The sufficiency of man is of God. God is our sufficiency. The Lord must be our shepherd. The Lord is our sufficiency. The Lord is our banner. The Lord is our righteousness. I'm here to tell us, our destiny is so tied with God. No wonder Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you are not going to do much. You can do nothing. God must become our sufficiency. If God has not become our sufficiency, then we are still deficient in whatever we think we are doing. Jesus said it, without me you can do nothing. God has to be, Jesus has become our righteousness, our shepherd, our banner, our peace is God. Our victory is God. He is God, that is our victory. The, the destiny of man is so linked with God. No wonder the Bible says in the book of 2, 2 Corinthians 5.17 that God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world to himself. The God does not want a distance between man and him anymore. God wants a total unity between him and God. This day, I'm here to tell you, God wants to be your sufficiency, your wisdom, your redemption, your shepherd. That's what he wants to be. If you'd accept him as your Lord and Savior today. That sufficiency that was lost at the garden was restored in Christ Jesus. He said, because I live, you shall live. Which means Christ defines us. Because Christ is in dominion, we are in dominion. Because Christ overcame, we overcame. Because Christ is at the right hand of the Father, we are at the right hand of the Father. Because Christ is in dominion, we are also in dominion. You are what Christ has defined you. You want to know what you have? Look at what Christ has. You want to know where you are? Look at where Jesus Christ has. You want to know what, what, what you, you are, you, you, you are your identity is, look at Christ's identity. No wonder we are told we are the sons of God because Christ is the son of God. This day, God wants to be your sufficiency one more. I want to pray as we close this program. I want to pray and ask God, those who have not accepted Jesus. The Bible says, without you, me, you can do nothing. Whatever we are doing outside Christ is nothing. What we are doing in Christ is something. Because whatever Christ is, is what we are. He defines us. We are as awesome as God is awesome. We are as beautiful as God is beautiful. We are as dominant as God is beautiful. We are as deep as God is deep. We are as wealthy as God is wealthy. We are as a success as God is a success. Our destiny, our heritage must be linked to Jesus. If you want to make him the Lord of your life, that he may be your sufficiency. This is your time to make Jesus your sufficiency. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians, I think it's verse five, 3, verse 5, 2 Corinthians 3, 5, that God has to be our sufficiency. Can you imagine? The impossibilities must go. Jesus saw, Peter saw Jesus walking on water. He said, if that is you, bid me to come walking on water. What Jesus was doing Peter was able to do it. As Jesus was, so was Peter. Jesus went and cast the fig tree. Then he says in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, whoever shall speak to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt, but shall believe that those things he says, he shall have them. He shall have what you say. Once again, 
We can come out of the woods because there are no impossibilities with us. We can have what we say in Jesus' name. All things are possible to them who believe. Once more, we are not hiding. Why? Jesus is out from the grave. We are out from hiding in the woods. We can face the world. We can face this morning and command it and have what we say in Jesus' name. We are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Once more, the image of God has been restored. The placement of God has been restored. Once more, we can stand still and command and have what we say. The only person who has what they say is God. And because Jesus is, we are joint heirs. The authority in Christ is our authority. Let me lead you to the Lord now. If you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Pray after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you. Wash me. Cleanse me by the blood of Jesus. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Father, whoever has called on your name and called on the blood of Jesus, Lord, their sins are washed away. You are the faithful shepherd, O oh God. Lead them to the right church in the name of Jesus. May they have divine encounters with men who will raise them in the path of righteousness in Jesus' name. Today, go forth in Jesus' name. You shall have what you say. What do you need today? It's not hiding time. It's a time to come out of your hiding and command your morning, command your month, command your year. This is the day the Lord has made. He has got enough grace for you. He has got enough wisdom for you. He has got enough goodness, the goodness of God. Not the goodness of men, the goodness of God awaits you. If in the desert, goodness was awaiting for them, they stepped out and collected manna, much more in this new covenant, under the blood of Jesus, you will receive and reap much more this day in Jesus' name. God bless you and prosper you and lift his light of his countenance upon you in Jesus' name. Pastor Leonard from God's Love Sanctuary, telling you, you are of God, in Jesus' name.